Hello, my name is Miriam Fernandez Santiago and I teach literature and critical theory at the University of Granada, where I also make research on contemporary literature in English and some critical instruments that are currently being developed within this field. In this video, I will go on discussing the notion of vulnerability as a critical instrument of analysis for literary studies. In the introduction to the volume, Representing Vulnerabilities in Contemporary Literature of the Rawlidge Studies in Contemporary Literature series, that I co-edited with Dr. Cristina Gamet Fernandez from the University of Córdoba in 2023, we developed a vulnerability scale that relates to the type of ethical response elicited from ethically responsive subjects and the literary representation of vulnerability. This introduction is available in open access at the following link. In my previous video, I established that the representation of vulnerability as a threat to human autonomy and integrity often entailed the marginalization and stigmatization of vulnerable subjects in real life. However, this is neither necessarily nor always so. In fact, the ethical response that readers give to the representation of vulnerable subjects has been found to depend on whether such subjects are deemed to be grievable or not. Although as a risk to human integrity and autonomy, vulnerability is a negative condition. Vulnerable characters and situations that readers can identify with may trigger an ethically positive response in the form of empathy and the impulse to provide care. This ethical response is, however, dependent on the very possibility to visibilize vulnerability in literary representation, since contrary to the way it is in real life, in literary form, invisible characters simply do not exist. It could be argued then that to literary existence, invisibility is the most radical form of vulnerability because it can trigger no ethical response from readers at all. On the other hand, visibilizing vulnerable characters in literary form can trigger a negative or a positive empathic response in readers depending on the way in which said vulnerable characters are represented. Thus, when non grievable characters are represented as stigmatized, sacralized, demonized, or ridiculed for the sake of textual intensity in terms of spectacularization, grievable characters not only elicit positive responses in readers in the form of the will to provide care, but also admiration for positive qualities often related to vulnerability, such as resilience. Still, this positive ethical responses to grievable characters are usually framed with narrative lines targeting redemption and heroism that are still based on a negative conception of vulnerability as a condition to be avoided, prevented, or solved. In terms of effect, the very notion of catharsis, for instance, rests on this negative conception of vulnerability. In real life, both forms of grievable and non-grievable representations of vulnerability entail a negative response to vulnerability that devalues the lived experience of vulnerable human beings. But in real life, as in literary texts, ethical responses to human vulnerability still depend on the possibility and aesthetic frame of its visibilization, which intersect, most notably, in the current digital economy of human attention. In my next videos, I will be presenting an attention-based vulnerability aesthetics, sketching a correlation between common literary devices, literary genres, written response and textual vulnerability, as well as the notion of an ecology of vulnerability as an alternative to the negative conception of vulnerability and its application to literary analysis.